This is the AGM-84 Standoff Land Attack Missile, or SLAM. It is a variant of the Harpoon Anti-Ship Missile, designed by McDonnell Douglas and Boeing that was made to attack land targets. I have a video about the Anti-Ship variant, if you haven't seen it, go check it out afterwards. Welcome to Scenario Fulfillment, I'm Dash89er, and today we'll be looking at the AGM-84 SLAM. There are three variants of the SLAM the AGM-84 Echo, Hotel, and Kilo. The Hotel and Kilo are known as the Slammer, ER at the end of it meaning Expanded Response. The Echo saw service from 1991 to 2000. The year 2000 is where the Slam ER comes in and is still in active service with the United States military, Taiwan, and a few others. All missiles have the same propulsion, a Teledyne J402 turbojet engine. All missiles should also use the same warhead, a WDU-18B penetrating high explosive fragmentation warhead, and all the missiles know where they are because they are guided by GPS and inertial navigation. The Echo used a modified AGM-65 Maverick Seeker, while the others were upgraded with a better Seeker that produced better picture along with these cool pop-out wings. Just like a normal cruise missile aided by GPS, the SLAM and SLAMMER can go from A to B with precision, but someone either in a launching aircraft or another aircraft can control the missile's seeker. In order for that to happen, they need a data link pod, like the ANA Double Dub 13 to communicate with the missile. If someone forgot to bring one, the pre-planned coordinates in the missile would do just fine with the GPS, unless the target requires critical precision or you just don't have a lot of these missiles. The Slammer is upgraded with automatic targeting. It uses a stored image for reference and compares it with what's in its seeker. Say you wanted to target this evil C-130, but this evil C-130 was moved a few meters away. The missile seeker can search around while at its final phase of attack. If it doesn't find it, it will just go to its pre-planned spot. The Slammer can be controlled at almost any time, still needs that pod though so don't forget it. Apart from land targets, the missile can attack maritime targets as well, preferably in its target of opportunity mode, such as using the aircraft's air to ground radar to look for ship returns. Alright, let's look at the basic operations of the missile. Today our FAA teams will be attacking a train car carrying an unexploded Tomahawk cruise missile at TARDIS Naval Facility. The flight leader will be launching his and the wingman will hold on to his in case the first attack fails. The naval air defense systems are offline so nothing should stop our missiles. The slammer coordinates have been entered on the ground for a pre-planned attack. As they are cruising, the pilots enter the distance from the target they want the seeker to enable so they can steer the missile, so say 15 miles away. Once they are within optimal range, the flight leader releases their missile, and they both turn away. The missile is flying as low as possible to avoid detection, but it can be set to different preset altitudes. Once the missile seeker transmits its image to the data link pod, the pilot can transmit steering information. Not from that far away though, preferably once the target is well within view. If the image gets grainy and choppy, the pilot can switch antennas in the pod for a better reception. This depends on the direction the aircraft is facing, and how far. Once the missile is close to its target, it will initiate a pop-up maneuver. Closing in on the target, the pilot slews the seeker to the train car. Thank you for watching. Help the channel grow by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and leaving your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.